We're going to start in Cinema 4D with a new scene, and we're just going to block out everything first and then add details later. So we'll start with a sphere and add 32 segments. And for the radius, up here I have this little null I created. And I added an annotation here just with a few notes for me. So the radius of the body is going to be 4 centimeters. And hit S to zoom in. And because we're working on a small scale, I'm going to hit Control D to open up the project settings. And for view clipping, I'm going to change this to small. That way, when we zoom way in, the camera won't clip through this. If it was set to large, you can see the clipping happens really soon. And so on the sphere, we're using 32 segments, so there's enough topology to work with. And with the sphere selected, I'm going to hit C to convert it to an editable mesh. And that way we can start pushing and pulling these polygons just to block out this initial shape. With the faces selected, I'm going to hit UL for a loop selection. And I'm going to grab these two, hit D for extrude, and then pull these in. And actually, you can see they're extruding along the normals. And so this is not flat. So instead of doing that, I'm going to go to scale by hitting T and then hold control to duplicate. And then with this selected, I'll pull these in. So this scales along the Z and X axes so that this is flat. You can see this edge here is flat now. Now middle mouse clicking, I'm going to switch over to the front view and zoom way in. And I'll have the the points selected here, and I'll just grab these, hit T to scale, and flatten this out, and pull these up. And hitting T again, I'll scale these up just so this edge has a little bit more to grab onto. And we can actually, with edges selected, double click this edge and hit M in to dissolve that edge and then grab these bottom vertices and scoot these up a bit. So it's kind of a mushroom shape. And we'll do a similar thing to the top. I'm hitting zero for this rectangular selection. I'll grab these, hit T to scale, and flatten out this top a bit. And then pull it down by hitting E for the translation and then just scooting that down. That way we still have a nice circular shape, but there's a little bit more detail. It's not just a perfect floating ball. Now, I want this section here to be straight up and down. So I'm going to switch back to perspective and grab this edge loop by double clicking. I'm going to hide this grid by going to filter, work plane. And then this horizon line back here, I'm going to hide as well by going to filter, horizon. And that only changes it in this viewport, so we still have the grids over here. And I'm just going to scale this up so these are flat, or they go up and down. And with the vertices select again, I'm going to pull this up just a little bit more. Okay, so now we have a general shape that we want for the main body of the robot. Now let's rename this sphere to body. And we'll start blocking out some of the other elements. For the thrusters on either side, let's start with a tube. Scale this down. And we need to keep in mind, this is about the size of a tennis ball. And so we can't have things be this small because that would be like microscopic so we have to keep in mind the actual practical scale of everything so maybe we can make it about this big i'm going to drop it inside of the null here just to keep it organized and rename it to thruster And for now, we can drop these segments down. 
think 16 might be enough for this. And I'll grab these little dots here to change the parameters of this. Maybe we'll make it a little dainty, a little flatter like that. And to mirror everything, let's drop in a symmetry object. And I'll put this inside of this null, but then add another null, which I have a little shortcut up here for. And we'll put that inside the symmetry and then the thruster inside here. That way, everything in this null will be symmetrized. Okay, now seeing both of these, I think the thrusters might be able to be a little bit closer. Oh, maybe not. Maybe a little further out's nice. Now let's work on the large main lens. So we'll add in a cylinder, scale it way down. Drop it inside of the null and change the orientation to positive or negative Z. Doesn't really matter. Just gonna put this in place. And we'll drop these height segments down just so we don't have anything extra going on here. And ideally, the number of segments here is roughly similar to the segments around the shape of it. And it looks like it's fairly close. Now let's move this up. That looks like a pretty good size. And this will be kind of the housing for the actual lens pieces. So this won't be glass, but inside of this will be. And just to visualize that, let's duplicate the cylinder by holding control and dragging this down. And let's rename these lens, I guess, tube and lens. So for the lens, let's drag it forward, scale it down. And for now, we can just add a fillet and then make the radius I guess all the way up so it smooths this out. You can see that better when it's all the way pulled out. And for the caps, I guess we have to do both sides, so we'll delete these back caps later. Let's make the height of it just a little bit longer so we don't have an intersection there. And that will go probably further back, but for now we'll just leave it up here. Now let's add some solar panels. So with the body selected, hitting nine to do the paint selection. And I'm just gonna select this top here and then hit UY to grow the selection. And I'm actually gonna delete all of this. And with the edges selected, I'll double click this to select this whole ring and then hit this make quads this is an extension that if we look right here we can see it's under user scripts hb modeling bundle and this bundle comes with a ton of modeling helpers and these are the ones that i use frequently from it i think the extension is maybe like 80 bucks so if you don't have this you can do it manually or keep it ha as it was but hitting this makes this nice flat surface that fills the hole and it makes the edge flow go straight across rather than going all the way into the middle, which adds a lot of pinching. And ideally we don't have a surface like that that has that many edges going into it. So now we have this nice flat edge. And if we right click on this edge, we can break the Fong shading and that will make it so if we switch back to shaded view within A, you can see we get this nice hard edge where before this was kind of soft shaded. Now I'm gonna go to edge mode again and hit T for scale and then hold control. So we'll duplicate this in and then hit E for translate, pull it down. T again for scale, hold control, drag it in. 
and then T again and bring it up. So this will kind of be our solar panel array. And it looks a little snug here. Let's take, take this lens, drop it in the lens tube to parent it. And then we'll pull this down just so it fits in that area a little bit better. So it's not colliding up here. So that's roughly how the solar panels will be. Now we have the four landing gear legs. So these aren't going to be too intense. They're going to be more little nubs that will absorb any impact if the little guy has to land. So to design this, we'll hop to the front view. And we'll just add one here on the right. So let's add a cylinder. Let's scale this down. Put it roughly in place. And for this, we can drop it in the symmetry null so we can see it on both sides. And let's change the height segments down to one and then make this pretty thin. And then let's hold control to duplicate this whole object, scoot it down a little bit, and then we'll put this inside of the parent. So if we move this, it'll move along with it. And then for this one, we'll change the orientation from Y, which is up and down, to plus or minus Z, so it goes forward. So this will be kind of like a joint. So make it a little bit bigger and switch to the other view to scale it down into size. Now we'll take this part of the leg again, hold control to duplicate it. We'll delete that joint out of it and then pull this as a child of, I guess the joint makes sense. That way, if we rotate this joint, this leg will move correctly. And let's make this final leg a little bit thinner. And then to make it look like this will have some sort of joint too, let's just take this joint and this time I'll do a copy paste with control C and V just to show another way how to duplicate stuff. And we'll delete this leg and drop it here at the symmetry null. Let's put this in place. And this we can make a little bit bigger. This is a little bit more load bearing. And we'll tweak all this as we start adding more detail. And now let's parent all these to that. That way, if we rotate this, everything moves along with it. And to make these legs a little bit more appealing, instead of having them be perfectly straight, let's give them a little bit of a bend. So to do that parametrically, we can select both of these legs. Let's rename this. And let's add some height segments. Maybe four is good for now. And with this one selected, let's shift click bend and that will add it as a child. And let's turn up this strength. And you can see it's working, but it's also bending the stuff below it. So we need to work on this hierarchy. For now, let's just flatten this out. So the legs are out on their own. And same with the joints. Now with this bend selected, we actually want it to bend from this end and not out this way. So let's just rotate it 180 degrees. And with it still selected, we'll rotate the whole thing up a bit. And then reduce the strength a fair amount, just so it's a little bit of a curve. And let's do that to the other leg. And with the Ben selected, click fit to parent. So that'll, that way it'll snap to the size and the position and rotation of this. And that already looks pretty good. Let's look at it from a different angle. Yeah, so now it matches kind of the aesthetic of this, which is very curvy. We're trying to keep things pretty fluid and curvy and not have 
too many hard straight edges. Let's reorganize this really quick. So on this leg thin, we want to taper it too so it's not so fat at the end. So in here, we'll add a taper. Pull that in and we'll taper it before we bend it. So we'll keep it above this bend. And fit to parent so it'll snap right to place. And then increase the strength until this tip is pretty small. Just enough so it's not totally flat. And we have a lot of stuff going on here. So we can hold Option or Alt and click these little stoplights and that will hide the visibility and render visibility of all these. Just to clean it up. And now it looks like this is a little out of whack. So let's figure out how we can parent all these together and not have all these deformers interacting with the wrong stuff. So let's start adding some nulls in here. We'll put this first null in this hip joint. And right now the null's at 0, 0, 0. So we need to reset the position, rotation, and scale to match this. So I have this shortcutted up here. You can also press Shift C to bring up this. And then just type in reset PSR. And that drops that down here. Now I can pull this out. And I don't want it rotated like this, actually. So let's change that rotation back to zero. And now we can put this hip joint in here. And I'll call this hip null. And then we'll kind of keep doing this down the line. So now we have a null in here. We'll call this leg thick. Drop that in. And then in here, oh, we need to center this first. So let's pull the leg thick out. Reset PSR. So we want this to be at the same location as this hip joint because the pivot axis of the leg thick should be up here. So we'll drop this in. So the hip null is rotating both of those and the leg thick is also doing the same. Now inside leg thick, we'll add another null. And this time we want it to be at the position of the knee joint. So let's actually drop it in there first, reset the PSR to put it in place, and then pull it out and put it in the leg thick. And we can reset this rotation again, drop in the knee joint, call this knee null. <laughs> and then we'll do this one more time. And this null, again, can be in the same location as the knee null. And this will be leg thin null. So that was a little convoluted, but the reason we had to do that is these disformers affect everything in the same level as they are. So if you have a leg thick and then have other stuff parented underneath it, this bend affects it. So adding everything to nulls, now all these deformers have their own space and so they don't affect stuff outside of it. And to collapse or unfold all, hold control and click the plus or minus. And that way you can quickly zoom everything out or collapse everything down in. So now we have nice controls for this direction and that direction. And yeah, that's a good start for those. And now currently we're using symmetry to put these in place. But we want four of these. And right now they're perfectly centered. So what we need to do, we'll grab this hip null. And let's actually use rotational symmetry. So we'll add a cloner. Drop that. So we don't want it to be in symmetry. So we'll keep it out of there. And we'll add this hip null as a child of the cloner. And then with the cloner selected, we'll change it to radial. And let's drag this radius down. So it fits about correctly. And I wonder if three would look better. Maybe let's start with three. We can easily change it to four legs if we want to. And right now, 
they're all rotating to the side. And so there's a few ways we can do that. If we try rotating this null, nothing happens because the cloner is kind of telling this hip null what orientation to be in. So in the transform tab, we can rotate it in the H direction. And it looks like 90 degrees is what we want. So now you can see we have these three legs and they're too high so we can just move this cloner down. Now we have these three legs so they can kind of balance like a tripod. Now I'll change this cloner name to leg cloner. And then delete this null we didn't use. So now we have the spring cushion is this bottom area. Let's add a little bit more detail to that. Let's go to edges mode, select the body, and hit KL to add an edge loop. Hold shift to snap it. And then in the center, we'll click once. So that enables this mode. And then you can see up here, I actually didn't click in center, I clicked it 33 degrees. But if we hit the plus, we can add more. It looks like it snapped automatically. And let's just add enough so we can pull these in and out. So right now we could pull this edge and this edge out and this edge would stay in. So let's just start there. So hit escape to commit that and then E to go to selection mode and then double click these to select that. Hit T for scale and we'll pull these out. And we're gonna want this edge, this edge and this edge to be sharp. So we can select all these by double clicking right click and break Fong shading. And because these angles were already above this 40 degrees, it was already broken. But now we can, if we change this, we can see this is kind of a soft edge. And then these hard edges are where these creases are. So it looks kind of like a, a foam or a rubber little cushion. Let's change this back to 40 for now. It's okay if it looks sharp right there. And I think that cushion is looking a little too big. I want it to be a subtle element and not this big kind of springboard. So let's go back to the front view, grab the body, grab the points. First, let's select this little cushion here. And then we can hit UY to grow the selection. So now only this is selected. Now let's hit O for rectangular selection, hold shift, and then drag this out to also select all these. And I wanna scale all this up and then we can kind of adjust this after. So to do that, I'm gonna hit T for scale. And then under the modeling axis, turn the Y all the way up. So that now we'll scale from here. So we can crunch this down and then hit U again and I'll reselect these, go to this view. And now, so how do we unselect all these and hit UL for loop selection. And we want to select this edge here to unselect these points, but it's not letting us do that. So let's flip inside. And now we can. So hold control and click and that will deselect all those. So now we just have this surface selected and not these points here. Let's go back out here, hit T for scale again, and then just push that up until the overall shape of this guy looks nice. I think a kind of flatter bottoms kind of nice. And then hitting O again to select. And I'm going to scale these up to flatten this edge out a little bit. And now we can move these feet up a little bit too by moving that leg cloner. And yeah, that looks good for the little cushion. And now we have some antenna that are going to come off the top. Let's go to the front view and add a cylinder. Scale that way down. And when I'm scaling, make sure that model is selected and not object. 
The difference here is a little confusing. When you scale a model, you can see these parameters here grow and shrink. But if I scale with objects selected, these parameters don't change, but the object's coordinates do. So it's telling the model to scale, but not the actual geometry to change. It's kind of confusing the difference between these two, but for the most part, you want your scale to remain at one, at least when you're modeling. So just stay in model mode while you're modeling. I'm going to reset these to one. And now let's change the height segments to one. And then rotation segments, we probably only need maybe let's say eight. And we'll make this nice and thin. And remember, if this is a tennis ball, how thick would an antenna be? So it'd be, you know, fairly thick, not not too thin, because we want it to still have some strength and be able to bend a little bit without breaking. Now I'll hit C to commit that, which is this button up here, make editable. And I'll rename that to antenna and drop it just inside this null. Because these antennas are gonna help find where the meteorites are, we need at least one more so it can triangulate stuff. I guess we'd need three for triangulation. So maybe we'll add another little one over here. Now I just control drag that out and then I'll take these points Hit O to select them, and then drag this one a little bit shorter. And this one I also want to be a little bit thinner as well, because it's more of a secondary antenna. So I'll go to scale, and if I hold shift and drag this one, it'll drag these two out kind of on the Y plane. So that way we're not making it taller, but we're making it thinner. And then for both of these, I can add another taper by holding shift to make it a child, and then crank that up just a little bit, maybe like 50%. That way it has a nice little taper. And I'll hide that just so we don't need to look at it. And then I'll control drag it into the other antenna. And you can see it went all wonky because this taper is still over here. So it's fits apparent. And you can see this, <laughs> this line way over here is the control and that's controlling the strength here. It's so huge because I think we're working on such a small scale. So that's not super helpful right now, but that's fine. Let's rename this antenna main and then antenna secondary. And when you're renaming stuff in the object view, if you tap up and down, you can quickly rename everything. So it's a really quick way to just like smash out all your naming conventions and get it nice and organized. Yeah, that's looking nice. Now that we're tapering this, I think the base of this could actually be a little bit bigger. So let's see what happens when we scale it up with the taper still on there. So I'm gonna hold shift again. And it looks like the taper is still working, but maybe not as effectively. So I'm gonna select the taper and fit to parent again, because it looks like it's scaled up as we scale this out. There we go, now it fits better. And we have curvature set to 100. That means there's a little bit of outward curving. It's not totally straight if we change this to zero. Now this edge is totally straight. If we crank it up, it actually bows out. So 100 is nice because it's just a little bit friendlier of a curve. It's kind of hard to see because they're so straight already, but it just adds a little bit of gradation to that curve. Now let's see what we have left. The battery pack in the back center. So going back to perspective, we have these thrusters here and they're gonna be controlled by this battery pack here. And before we build that, we need to figure out where these are gonna retract into. So selecting the body, we can tell that this is the area where these would fit into. So we can keep this pretty simple and just deselect these front faces by holding control while dragging this out. And then let's also deselect some of these back faces. And you'll notice when deselecting or selecting, 
if I'm not totally covering the entire polygon, it'll stay selected. It has to be fully enclosed for that to take effect. Now for these little holes, I'm gonna hit I for inset and just drag these in a little bit to create this edge loop here. And then I could hit D to scale it in, but, or to extrude it in, but it goes along the normals. And I want this slot to be straight across, not along these normals. So I'll undo that and instead just hit T for, for scale and then hold control to duplicate these edges in. And that way they're just straight in rather than at this normal angle. And if we go to the top, I think it'd be nice if these curved in obviously to fit the contour of this better. So I'll deselect these and then I'll just scale it back until it looks like it has a nice curve and I can hold shift while doing this to lock it in. Let's just try what a hundred looks like. And then obviously it's sticking out here. You can see it's a little, a little chonky there. So we're going to need to scoot this in and I'm holding control again or shift again. And obviously the snapping is going every five centimeters, which is way too big. So let's actually reset this to zero and then go to modeling, quantize, and change it into just move snapping to maybe like 0.5. See how that works. Yeah, that's much more manageable. So let's just move it in one centimeter. And rather than repeating all that on this other side, we're gonna mirror this whole thing. So let's drag this out and select all these polygons. And that looks like it just selected what we want. And I'll delete that. And then for this body, we'll add a symmetry, drop it in here and then drop in that body. And so this is mirroring across the ZY plane, Z being forward and backward and then Y being up and down. So the plane is this one here because Y is up and Z is forward and backward. So it's mirroring across this flat plane, which is, you know, from the left to the right. So now as we make changes on this side, they'll be propagated over to the other side. Now we have a cat robot. <laughs> so now we have a slot for these to fit into. Now looking at the whole model, I think the thrusters are looking a little thin actually. So let's select that and just fatten it up a teeny bit. And let's taper this while we're at it. Let's go in here and add a taper and hold shift to make it a child. And then looks like it's upside down. So we can hit R for rotation and then shift to snap it. So now we're getting a nice little curvature. And Maybe should, we should make these flat rather than curved. And because there's no height segments, you can't even see any curvature. So it's going to be flat anyway. Now that looks nice. Maybe the curvature is a little too strong. I'll turn it down to maybe 15. Yeah, that's nice. All right, let's build these little arms. So the way it'll work is the base will be connected back here. And actually let's go to options and turn on ambient occlusion. This just adds a little bit of darkness detail to overlapping stuff. If we hit shift V and then go to effects and then ambient occlusion, we can turn up this power. Let's just turn it to two so we can see it better. And the radius, because we're working at a small scale, you can see the grid spacing here. Let's try to turn this down to 10 and then five maybe. Okay, five might be nice, because now you can start seeing a little bit of this, like crank the power way up. You can see what this different radiuses are doing. So we want enough just to show a little bit of information. Looks like five is pretty good. 
we'll turn this power back down to two. And samples we can turn up because we got a beefy computer here. So now it's a little easier to understand some of these definitions. So we're going to have the base here and we'll connect it maybe somewhere here. So when it rolls in, it can kind of pivot and fit in this slot. And we'll, we'll start using some of the same design elements here. Actually, let's see if we can just duplicate this and add it up here. So in the leg cloner, we'll just grab this hip null and control drag it out. And we can hit reset PSR to center this. And then we can just drag it over and up and we'll rotate it. And then rotate it this way. So now we already have a good start to some sort of arm function here. In the top view, let's kind of place this. We want it to be right in this little nook. And judging by how this would fit out, maybe we need to move these thrusters back. Let's just grab this whole symmetry null. Actually, just the thruster. And scoot this back. And that way, with this selected, we can rotate these pieces. And now it'll kind of fit together. We'll have to change the scale of stuff, but we're saving some time reusing this asset we built earlier. For the leg, let's make this a little bit longer. And then probably both of these a bit longer. And then need to reposition this. And then the knee null, push out here. And then the leg thin, we just need a bit longer. Now let's make sure all the positions are correct. So we have hip joint, leg null, the leg, the knee null, knee joint, and the leg null. So that looks good. And for this one, because this isn't the landing gear, we don't necessarily want this to be so tapered. Let's hop in there and turn it down. Maybe keep a little tapering, but not too much. And let's decrease that bend so it kind of reaches out a little bit further so it connects at a bit of an angle so it's not just straight on. And if you hold Alt or Option while dragging this, you can drag in smaller increments. And then, was it? Shift, you can drag in greater increments. And so now this kind of has a nice continuation of motion. You get this nice kind of swirly shape. And it's only appearing on one side. So let's drop it into that symmetry null. And I'm going to use this button up here. It's a fold all. You can find that in view, folding, fold all. And that way it just collapses all your things. And I'm going to scoot this up just so it fits this better. And then we'll grab this arm and drop it in the symmetry null. And I probably should have done this opposite way because the thruster is over here and the leg is over here. So this is mirroring over here and then this is mirroring over here. So maybe I should just do that now before I get into some trouble. So I'm just gonna literally drag this over and it's probably not best practice, but I'll just flip it over this way just to get it in place. We can reset all the axes later. And now looking at this, it kind of looks like the robot has some plates that he's about to throw forward, <laughs> like he's an angry waiter. So let's actually flop this backwards, see if that looks a little bit more inviting. And for this, we'll move it to the back edge here. 
Yeah, I like that better. That way these arms are a little bit more out of the way. Now let's hide this world axis just so we can really see what we're working on. And then I'm going to hit NE for a flat shaded view. And then the ambient occlusion is still on, so let's just turn that off for a second. And these legs are showing up white because it's the result of this cloner. It's under the transform tab. We can force it to be the same. So now we can see the overall silhouette of this guy. And it's looking pretty good so far. I think those arms are looking a little gangly, so we'll have to spruce that up. But otherwise, I think the overall shape is nice. We want it to be a, still a pretty simple circular shape. So I think we're handling that pretty well. All right, now let's actually add that battery pack. I'll hit NB to go to shaded view with wireframe. And back here. So first, let's actually reorganize this whole stack here. It's getting a little messy. All right, so back in this body, we'll select all these rear polygons here and then inset them and you can see we have these extra edges here because we're using the mirror so let's hit E for select select these edges delete those and then with edge selected oops let's grab these and if we hold control shift we can grab this whole path essentially and then under position we have negative 0.1 centimeters on the x if we change this to zero it'll snap that straight to the zero so now they're perfectly aligned let's go to edge mode and hit kl and we're going to drop another edge right in the middle of this one and then with this edge selected let's see if we can bevel this by hitting ms and dragging this out and you can see it's beveling here fine, but this polygon here is overlapping. So I'm just gonna hit E to go back to translation mode. And then have faces selected. And I'm just gonna delete that for now. So we have a little hole, and then I'm gonna hit ME for the polygon pen tool. And then control drag these into this corner. Oh, I just filled that. Let's just add an edge here for now. And so now we have this little bit of a curve here. And with faces still selected, we can hit UL to select this edge loop. And then D to extrude it back. And because we're extruding, we get this extra edge here. So let's just delete that. And because it's extruding along the normal, you can see it's being pushed out a little bit. So there's overlap there and probably overlap here too. But in our symmetry, we can change the tolerance of this up a little bit so it might catch those overlaps and just blend them together. So it looks like that did the trick. So now we have this little battery pack area and it looks like we have some shading issues here. So let's take a look. So this pole right here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven edges going into it, and that's not great. So what we can do is we can throw some of these edges out to pull it away from this pole. So I'm gonna open up the polygon pen tool again and make sure points is selected. And essentially we wanna kind of, actually I'll hit KK for line cut. Kinda of wanna break this part up. Oops, and hit ME to do polygon pen tool and just pop that in there. So now with this shape, we can control click this with the polygon pen tool and that'll delete those edges. But now these are end gons because they have five edges. So with the line cut, the knife tool, we'll actually draw out a little shape here and then connect these to the corners.
Now with the polygon pen tool, we can control click these. And now we're kind of spacing out where those go. Oof, I don't know how that happened. There we go. Now all these points should be singular. We still have this hard edge here, so I'm going to select all the points and hit U Shift O, and that'll bring up this optimize. And by holding Shift and then hitting O, it gives you more parameters. So let's see if we can delete a few of these because it looks like there might be some overlapping points. Okay, so that did the trick. It looked like there might have been a few points here that were overlapping. So now we have this edge here that flows around here nicely, and all of this gets kind of pushed out to here. And you can see we're getting a little bit of shading, pinching going on here. And that's not great, so let's see if we can go and flatten these polygons out. I'm just going to literally grab this with scale selected, right click on the handle and change it to normal. That way it's facing the normal and I'm just going to scale this down to zero. And I'll do that for these two. Now it's still looking pretty pinched, so I'm going to slide these points out just a little bit. I'm going to hit MO to go to the slide tool. And then I should be able to just scoot these out. So by pushing these out just a little bit, it's making these more even, and that should minimize some of that stretching we were finding. There's still just a little bit of a patch there, but that's fine for now. Now I have this little battery pack panel. And for these thrusters, looking at it from the front, I almost want them to be up just a little bit. So the force is going out rather than straight up. That way it seems like it might stabilize a little bit better. So in the arms, I'll go down to the thruster and I'll just rotate that up a little bit. And now it's not just perfectly straight across too, so it's a little bit better of a shape. We can even grab these knee nulls and bend those up a little bit and then move the thruster up still. So it's just a little bit more of that continuation of rotation. And it just looks a little bit more friendly not having such a perfectly flat line there. All right, so so far we have a pretty good blocked out phase. Looks like this could be anchored a little bit better. I'll just grab this whole thing and push it back just so this joint is a little bit more inside there. And then I'll grab this joint and just pull it in. And then the thruster, I can scoot. I like it being back, so maybe I'll take the hip and just rotate this back too. And for this thin leg, I think I'm just going to disable the taper. Just keep it thicker all the way along. All right, so that's a good start. If we look at it with a flat shaded view, get a nice silhouette from most of the angles. And while I'm modeling, you can see when I get close, there's a fair amount of distortion. If I go to mode and then camera, I can change this focal length to 50. And that way it's, the camera is essentially a little bit more zoomed in so now when I get close, there's not as much distortion.